On this half hour of 7 News, we continue our March Madness coverage in Greenville where fans are pouring into the NCAA tournament. We have live team coverage this afternoon. Chief Meteorologist Christy Henderson is keeping an eye on the weather. But first, we begin with our very own 7 News Sports Director Pete Yannity with more on the games. Hey, Pete. Kelsey, you can appreciate in team sports how it takes more than one person, obviously, in the South Carolina team that will hit the court tomorrow here in the well in their Sweet 16 game when they take on UCLA at 2 p.m. is obviously the sum of its parts. It's an excellent team with a lot of depth and a lot of talented players. The very best of all, Aaliyah Boston, a national player of the year, who's probably going to win that award again next season. But someone who you could put in the same sentence is Zaya Cook, the senior guard. Throughout this season, she has been spectacular once again. She leads her ball club in scoring at better than 15 points a game as we see her in action. And a couple of weeks ago in the well, when they knocked off Tennessee to win another SEC championship, Cook was front and center of that. But she's been a double-figure scorer throughout her career. She's been phenomenal on both ends of the floor. The only trouble with her is her timing. She has played in the same era that the great Aaliyah Boston has. But Zaya Cook is someone not to be forgotten. She will not be forgotten in Gamecock lore. And we asked her this afternoon after USC practiced exactly what she wants to be remembered for. I just want the world to remember that I, that I take take basketball very seriously. Um, I, I take I take winning very seriously. Um, and I don't take any shortcuts. Um, I just want people to remember me as a person that uh, gives them my all, a very hard worker. Her mental spot is really good, but also we believe in Zaya. We know that she can shoot the ball. We know that she can guard anybody that coach puts her on, and she just continues to hype us up. And Cook and Boston are longtime friends. They arrived in a number one rated recruiting class as freshmen a few years ago. They've actually known each other for quite a long time. They played junior basketball together coming up through Team USA. So that kindled a relationship. They both ended up on the USC campus. And coming up at 5 o'clock, Mariah Ross has more on Zaya Cook, the player, and her emergence as a star to go along with Aaliyah Boston. As we speak right now, things are tight. They've tightened up between Miami and Villanova as they play in the fourth quarter of the first of two games today. LSU and Utah follows. And then, of course, tomorrow, 11.30 a.m., things get started here with Notre Dame and Maryland, followed by South Carolina and UCLA. And that comes uh, up at about 2 p.m. Tonight on Channel 7, lots of great hoops starting out with Miami and Houston. That's followed by Texas and Xavier in the men's tourney. For now, 7 News Sports is live here at the well in downtown Greenville. Kelsey. Thank you, Pete. South Carolina has been such a fantastic team to follow all season long. Let's head back out now to 7 News. Chief Meteorologist Christy Henderson, who is also in Greenville outside of the well, with a look at your game day forecast. Hey, Christy. Hey, Kelsey. Yeah, the forecast is good for this evening. Of course, I've got my basketball here. you got to fit in with what's going on, right? Every now and then, we've had some fans kind of walking on in. I've got some fans here taking pictures in front of the March Madness uh, inflatable there. Hey, how are y'all doing? Are you excited? What team are you going to see? <laughs> They're not playing. <laughs> not playing today. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't matter who, you know, it doesn't have to be your exact team. Maybe you just like basketball and you want to watch a good game. Anyway, they're heading in. The weather out here is good for now. That is going to be changing overnight as the front gets closer to us because we do have some rain chances that we'll be talking about. But in the meantime, it's quiet weather and it is warm, warmest day of the year so far. We're in the low 80s around the upstate, upper 70s to lower 80s in western North Carolina. Rutherfordton, 81, 82 in Spartanburg. 82 in Greenville. Again, we're in good shape for now. Out west, you can see some showers and some thunderstorms, and that whole system is going to be moving our way. And so that's going to increase the shower chances for us late tonight going into tomorrow morning. So uh, I think uh, we're going to be fine for this evening, but expect the winds to stay up. They've been whipping us around a little bit uh, out here this afternoon uh, and also warm temperatures. So uh, you can see that we're going to start tomorrow in the 50s and 60s with some rain around. But beautiful out here for now. We'll check in in a few minutes and we'll take care of the rest of the weekend's forecast. Kelsey. All right, Christy, in a couple of minutes, we want to see more of those skills. Thank you. Well, eight of the best women's college basketball teams in the country are in Greenville this weekend for the tournament, along with their coaches, athletic staff, and their fans. Here's a look at some of the excitement and how local police are preparing for the big weekend.
Excitement is building in and around Greenville for the 2023 NCAA March Madness Women's Tournament. Everyone loves it. Definitely a boon to the economy, and I'm sure that all the people here appreciate the so. influx of people. Banners can be seen flying above the streets as the city gears up for a weekend of hoops. It's been a great month for basketball, obviously. Uh, we've sort of been the epicenter of women's college basketball in the month of March here in Greenville. With a number of people expected to be in town and around the Bon Secours Wellness Arena, Greenville police say they're prepared. Mainly uh, what we're going to be doing is having plenty of officers outside uh, directing traffic, directing people across the street and have officers inside providing event security. In previous years, Sergeant Jonathan Bragg with the Greenville Police Department says all of those visitors tend to clog up the roadways. The biggest thing is making sure people know where they can park um, and how to safely get to the arena. So we encourage a lot of people that are driving in to um, park at different parking garage throughout the city, uh, throughout the downtown area. Greenville police say several medians will be closed off to pedestrians to allow for a smoother commute for drivers. There won't be any road closures um, other than just uh, closing the median so people can't run across the street. Uh, we did that for SEC and it worked out well. Um, so we want to make sure people utilize the sidewalks. Extra officers will also be in and around the arena for security. They'll be on the concourse um, and addressing any issues that may occur inside um, near the event or um, outside on or outside of the event on the concourse. It's an effort that leaders with Visit Greenville say makes traveling to the area more comfortable. Safety is a certainly an important topic when you're talking about visitation and tourism. People want to travel to places that make them feel very safe. When people think about Greenville, they think about the ability to shop and eat really good food. We have wonderful hotels. Having an event like the NCAA and having a, a facility like the arena to be able to host these really big events are very important for us. And it's one they're excited for. Just excited. Uh, just one more chance to showcase Greenville uh, to many fans from throughout the country and again to uh, put ourselves on the map as a basketball town. And as you saw earlier, those games began this afternoon and run through Monday. As a reminder, tonight in the men's tournament, five seed Miami will be playing one seed Houston at seven o'clock. Then following that game will be Xavier versus Texas. You can catch them both right here on Channel 7. Tomorrow in the women's tournament here in Greenville, three seed Notre Dame is taking on number two seed Maryland at 1130. And later top seeded South Carolina will face UCLA at two o'clock. Both of those games will be on ESPN. Now on 7 News, a historical landmark in the town of Jonesville was taken down today. Our Henry Coburn was there and shows us what comes next. Crews dynamited the old mill smokestack here in Jonesville this morning. It's a sad day for people who grew up in the area and know it as a landmark. But the town says it's an exciting day as well because the replacement is going to move the town into the future. Dozens gathered in Jonesville to watch the demolition of the smokestack. With a boom and a cloud of dust, the iconic structure that had been here since the 1800s collapsed. It was 18 seconds. I timed it. The town of Jonesville didn't want to demolish the smokestack, but said they couldn't afford to keep it around as they transformed this area for future generations to enjoy. The town's goal for the old mill site is to transform it into a large park, complete with USC Upstate sports amenities, a picnic area, an amphitheater, and more. The first step in the process was the demolition and cleanup, which took years and hundreds of man hours to organize. It's very hard for small towns to grow, but uh, the mayor and council here in Jones will see that if we want to survive another hundred years, we've got to move forward and we've got to be able to compete with the Woodruffs and the Clintons and the smaller towns. Next up, the town is going to try to figure out what to name the park once it is complete, and they do want people's input on it. So they say to keep your eye on their social media for your chance to contribute to the name. For now, in Jonesville, Henry Coburn, 7 News. Well, it is Friday and 7 News is honoring our local first responders. Fred Cunningham has a look at how the Wade Hampton Fire Department is teaching students.
if it was up to these high school students from Greenville County, they'd spend more time with the Wade Hampton Fire Department than in class. As it stands, they're already here for half the day, learning how to become firefighters. We try to get them as fully involved as possible. So they get on the trucks, they run the calls, we get them involved in training, day-to-day -day activities, meetings. Uh, we try to enlighten them on what the fire service is really about day-to-day. Natalia, Landon, and Tamil don't come from first responder families, but once they got this option from the Golden Strip Career Center, they're now all in. I just really wanted like a physically demanding job, you know, something that wasn't the same thing every day, like a, like a nine to five, because um, you never really know what you're walking into with this kind of job. I chose welding, but the class filled up, so they put me in firefighting and I ended up enjoying it, so I went back for the second year this year. Once the, once you hear the alarm and the tones and stuff, like we were driving on the opposite side of the road, which is actually pretty nice. It's, like The adrenaline is crazy. The firefighting class has been available for a few years, but getting the hands-on experience with the Wade Hampton Fire Department is new. And for the Career Center, it can help get rid of something old. I think that there's still been some of a stigma about Career Centers, even when I was growing up, that it's for those kids. And we like to joke about who were those kids. Those kids are the ones who want to make money, who want to um, have great skills and great training to be productive citizens in our, in our community and to give back. They're able to graduate high school with all their certifications. So I had to go to the South Carolina Fire Academy, which there's nothing wrong with, uh, but I was there for seven weeks. Uh, still had bills to pay while I was there. Uh, these kids are able to graduate high school, trained, especially doing on-the-job training like they're getting to do now. And Vance Mahaffey's here from Benson Hyundai. He's got a special presentation. On behalf of Benson Hyundai and the entire Wade Hampton community, we want to thank you for what you do and your team, and we have a small token of our appreciation. Thank you, sir. And that is First Responder Friday. And we are so grateful for all of our first responders. Still ahead on 7 News, tensions are heating up in the Middle East after the U.S. responded to attacks from terrorist groups with airstrikes. And here's a live look at downtown Giant Basketball in front of the Bonscores Wellness Arena.